Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We're a webinar, a webcast, whatever you want to call us. Um, we're online, and we do this every week. Um, um, we cover a variety of library activities, topics, anything library related. Uh, the show is free and open to, um, to anyone to watch. Uh, we do the show live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. But you are, if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. You can always go to our website and see, um, watch our recordings. Um, all of our recordings going back to when we first started the show in January 2009 are available on our website. So you can go back and watch anything you want to there. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, book reviews, mini training sessions. Um, as I said, anything, um, if it's library related, we are um, thrilled to have it on the show. And we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show, and we sometimes have guest speakers, as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us from the East Coast, um, from Earliesville, Virginia, is Melissa Techman. Oh, did I pronounce that right? I forgot. I didn't ask you. Yes. Yes, okay, yeah. great. <laughs> Always forget these things. Um, and she is at the, as you can see there on the slide, the Brodus Wood Elementary School. And also, um, you work at a couple of different schools, or it's just part of the, um, the county public system there, I guess. Right. Yeah. And um, she's got this great program. This is actually something we had done a previous show about um, these Mozilla um, tools that um, the Mozilla company, the Mozilla Corporation, the same people that provide to do Firefox browser, um, we had done a previous session with them about this, the things that they have, and Melissa contacted me and said, hey, we do something with this with our teens. I'd love to share it. And so you contact me and say that, and you get put on the show. <laughs> so um, this morning, um, Melissa's going to tell us what she's been doing with these, um, having her teens make some cool websites using some of the Mozilla tools. So I will just hand over to you, uh, Melissa, to go ahead and take it away with your presentation. Thank you so much, Krista. I'm Melissa Techman, and I'm currently a K-5 school librarian in a small town outside Charlottesville, Virginia. We're about two hours south of D.C. in a beautiful part of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Um, but before I was a school librarian, I was a public librarian. I was a children's librarian at Houston, one of the branches of Houston Public Library. Actually, I trained on three or four branches at Houston mm -hmm. Public. So I've got a place in my heart for public librarians and for the important role of, of libraries in our culture. When I switched to become a school librarian, I did the alternative career path, which means I took a few graduate courses, I was my own mentor, I cobbled together different things and got a provisional certificate, which then became an alternative teacher certificate to be a K-12 school librarian. And, um, and I've really enjoyed working in schools. I like the autonomy. Um, but I never entirely understand how schools work. And I think that that confusion has served me well because I just pretty much do what I want and my students love it. Um, I am very active on Twitter. I'm M. Techman. I do a couple of um, sort of professional looking things on Pinterest. I run a Pinterest board for School Library Journal called the Cheap and Cheerful Library Tips Board. And I'm also part of some groups on Pinterest that collect resources related to STEM programming and museum inspiration for libraries of all kinds. So today's topic is Teen Tech Time, and this is kind of a mix of um, how to do it, how can you do it, why I did it, and why I love it. Um, there are things that are very important to me professionally, and I, I call some of these groups part of my heart network. These are people that are wonderful entities that are just wonderfully important. They make my life richer. They're, they, these are the, the people and the groups that really matter to me. Libraries in the middle, and that's my favorite local library. It's brand new. It's Crozet Library. And what you're looking at right now is the Book Brigade, where the whole community turned out to pass books hand by hand to hand to move the books from the former library, which was in a cutie pie little train station to this beautiful new library in Crozet, Virginia with a giant wall of glass that faces the Blue Ridge. So libraries have been important my whole life. We came to America when I was four. 
um, I've been an American since I was 10. The minute I could read, I uh, was bugging someone to take me to the library. Um, on the left, you see the, the um, symbol for the Educator Innovator group. That's a part of the National Writing Project. Ed Educator Innovator is um, a, it's a collaboration between the National Writing Project and the MacArthur Foundation. And it supports networks that are all about connected learning. And Mozilla is definitely an important part of that. But there are other networks, too. And then the, um, the brand on the right, NAEA, that's another part of my heart network, which is art teachers. That the, that's the National Association of um, the National Art Education Association. And I have written about several of their yearly conferences for School Library Journal. And um, in fact, two years ago, I left. I presented at South by Southwest, and I left early. I missed seeing Bill Gates because I was taking the train to Fort Worth to see a group of people that mattered more to me, and that's art teachers. So this is the front of the Crozet Library this summer. And of course, having been a former public librarian, I know how hard it is to put together uh, a three-ring circus every summer for all ages. Um, it's, there are a lot of things happening for children in the summer, and I'm really thrilled with how public libraries are putting together more and more programs for teens. So when I approached our local library system and asked if they would be interested in me collaborating with them to run some two-session events for teens around the Mozilla Webmaker tools, they were very happy, and I really have to give these people credit. I don't think it was just because I have an MLS. I think they just are very pleased to work with anybody who wants to do stuff in the library. And I have a real heart for um, people who are doing summer programming. I'm, I'm kind of feeling my way into more collaboration between school libraries and public libraries, and it's really exciting to see more of that happening nationwide. So we had a mixed group at our sessions, and we had many girls. This is a picture from one of the sessions at the central branch of Jefferson Madison Regional Library. We had some homeschoolers. We, our plan was for um, each event to be two sessions, one and a half hours each. And I have provided those events at two branches, and I'll be providing them at two more branches this fall and winter. And the reason I'm excited that we got so many girls to turn out for this is because I volunteer for Tech Girls. And you're going to see in just a minute, you're going to see Kim Wilkins in one of my slides. Kim Wilkins has really made a difference in a lot of people's lives in our community, and she's starting a nonprofit. It, she started an entity called Tech Girls, and they're getting nonprofit status any minute now. But she has reached out to support girls in technology all over Virginia. She's presented nationally. You can Google her. You can Google her Tech Kim, all one word, and find her wiki, which is full of resources resources for boys and girls, of course, but her main emphasis is in encouraging and supporting girls. And I'm a volunteer for her uh, because her message really resonates with me. There's an unspoken fear that if you don't do really hard math in high school, um, that uh, a technology-rich career is not for you. And that is so untrue. So one of her one of her messages is that you can start anywhere, which I love. And another of her messages is that we need to um, demystify and include young people in authentic ways. And that's, that's a, a terrific message for all kinds of groups. It was so much fun in these sessions to see them helping each other. We had multi-age groups. Um, it was our sessions were open to grades 6 through 12. I had a couple of rising 6th graders. It definitely took them longer to 
to make to finish the projects and to customize some of the websites but they loved it and some of the older kids helped them so that was really cool there are many entry points to this kind of work this creative kind of tinkering where you are remixing templates other people make and then as you get good you can make templates for your friends to remix the main message that I want to get across to all of you is that you really can start anywhere and where I started was knowing nothing and at this point I'm very proud to say that I know very little but I'm still learning and I'm not afraid and I'm learning from these teens I'm learning alongside these teens and with these teens and I'm getting a lot of ideas for how to help them connect with others in meaningful ways. So having said that I'm proud to know very little, <laughs> I've personally felt very empowered and welcomed by coding experts from Kim who has a background in computer science to some wonderfully inclusive and geeky librarians who I know online and through Twitter. We're looking at the WebMaker tools now. The one on the right, AppMaker, just got added this year I think. Um, so we started out with the first three. X-ray goggles is a very simple one. You could definitely do a one-time session using X-ray goggles with, I would say, kids as young as third grade. Um, it's a, it's kind of a quick and easy tool that allows you to see the, the chunks of different parts of web, websites, and then you can change them but you're not changing them permanently. So it, it's really a hoot. Like you can take, have students take their school website and rename their school with their name and rename the mascot, you know, replace the image of the mascot with an image of their favorite pet and um, then save the URL. You're not actually changing the existing website but it's a really fun activity and it, and it kind of helps them to see what are the different parts the chunks of code that make up websites the one tool that we used for these teen sessions that I did this summer the teen events was thimble and that's the the middle one thimble provides a split screen look at some websites that have been previously made within thimble you get a free account um, from Mozilla WebMaker and then you go to any of these templates and click the remix button which is always on the upper right and then you get a split screen view of the code on the left with directions and encouraging words and then the, um, the, visual, um, the visual look on the right to show you what the website looks like. And you can, and this is exactly where I started, was taking, on my own, taking a template someone else had made and then looking at the code on the left and starting to see, oh, if the title on the right says, my favorite movie, I can spot those words in the code and I can erase those words and replace them with my words and then the words on the visual part of the website change. Uh, so I started tinkering and then learning a little bit about tags, a little bit about um, you know what are the chunks of code that hold that hold the different images and words, and then uh, I started to look at some of the CSS that that is the code that provides the style for the look of the images, the look and feel of the website. I sound like I really know something right now, but remember, I know very little. But when you start to look on the left-hand side of any symbol project or template, you, you can start to figure it out just using logic, just, just reading and, and figuring out what's going on. And that's a starting place right there. A lot of people start there, get really interested, and then go to how to code sites to learn more. And there are lots and lots of resources out there. 
where kids and adults can learn how to code. But um, so far, I haven't had time to take any of those classes. So I am just doing OK with a tiny bit of HTML and a, a fairly decent dose of logic. So I think it's wonderful for teens not only to develop a sense of autonomy online, but this ability to customize online tools and sites and content can also kind of enhance a critical eye. They start to look at what they're seeing online in a new way. And it's a lot of fun. So the other two tools, Popcorn Maker allows you to remix audio and video snippets. I'm hoping to do something with Popcorn Maker next summer with the teens. I haven't talked to the public library yet, but I want to give myself the spring to tinker with that, and I think we'll have a lot of fun with that. These are the web competencies or web standards that Mozilla has developed. We mostly know Mozilla from Firefox, but they have this whole educational and sort of outreach side where they work on web literacy standards and concepts, what are the um, tech, tech competencies that all citizens in all countries should have. They support net neutrality. They support um, op being able to openly work on the web. And these are all things that align perfectly with um, library professional ethics, I think. So Mozilla has teaching kits that go along with these tech competencies, and the teaching kits include the templates that I'm going to be showing you, some of them made with Thimble, some of them that we remixed this summer with teens. Um, since I'm a school librarian, I have to have a SMART goal every year. And that stands for something, something measurable, et cetera, et cetera. And my SMART goal, my professional SMART goal for this year is to kind of build out the tech competencies that I think our K-5 students need grade by grade and align them with information literacy standards and then also with these wonderful Mozilla standards. Here are the two key people that I uh, have worked with recently. Tim Carrier is the adult, I'm sorry, the young adult service coordinator for Jefferson Madison Regional Library. And there, there's Kim Wilkins, the founder of Tech Girls. Kim coded uh, one of the templates that I'll be showing you in a minute, the flipping postcard. Tim helped me plan, organize, and pull together these events that, that we provided. When I was at the Central Branch, and that's what you're seeing right now, this is the downtown library in Charlottesville, Virginia. It's a beautiful, gracious old building. Um, Tim, when we were at the Central Branch, Tim came and also Angela Critics came, who is the Central Branch young adult librarian. And uh, then when we went to the other branches, the, um, when I went to Crozet Branch and then coming up the, the forthcoming events, the, those two branches, I'll be working with the um, teen librarians there. Kim Wilkins just happened to pop in. And if you look at Tim, he's got a blue lanyard on. And Kim had some leftover stuff. She had some um, cool giveaways that Mozilla had mailed to her. So if you host a Mozilla event like this, contact them. They're easy to find, just Mozilla webmaker, librarians, you'll find them. And um, they'll be glad to send you a box of giveaways. And so we gave away lanyards and stickers, and the kids loved it. So Kim was there for part of one of our sessions, which was fun. She could answer a couple of questions. Um, because I know very little, and the teens are always teaching me a lot more than I'm teaching them. So now we're ready for the how-to. This part of my presentation is step-by-step -step what you need to know to offer one of these events in your library. You are very welcome to customize this whole approach, and um, the last slide is resources. So I've got editable stuff that you can use, and I'm just going to walk you through step by step how you can do this. 
So first is get together who's going to do it. Which staff members do you want any volunteers? You want to decide how many seats you're going to have. The number of attendees equals the number of laptops. And so you want to figure out, you know, how many how many people can come to your event and what what grades. I strongly recommend that you open it up to grades 6 through 12. They all get along great. They help each other and they're very, very able. Um, and as I said, in the resources you will see you will see some of the forms that you might need that you can edit and make your own. So step one, you plan. Step two, you schedule the two-part sessions. If you're, if you're making it shorter, you could definitely make it a one-part session. In that case, I would take my website and edit it down, use just one template instead of two, and um, but you could do it in one session. I kind of liked having the luxury of two-part sessions. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at the Apple Store in Italy. This image is to, uh, to be able to laugh at ourselves with a bitter sound in our voice because we don't all have a lot of laptops. And Kim and I are running into this problem all the time. Kim is doing wearable technology. She's, she's borrowing Makey Makeys from me and everybody she knows. She's offering scratch classes. She's borrowing laptops from people. I was very lucky to be able to borrow 15 laptops from my school system. I was also smart. I asked the right person because I, I, there's a good chance that if you ask the wrong five people, they will say no. Uh, but it's very hard to borrow laptops, and this is, the, to me, the central issue. We've got libraries in my area that could offer all kinds of amazing events if they could just borrow some laptops. They don't have the budget to give every branch 20 laptops, but as communities, if we could work out how to get some corporate support, get some academic support, uh, get grants, figure out something so that these these different groups in town could have laptops available. Kim and I would love to provide some of these Mozilla Webmaker sessions at a local community center. They've got 15 partner institutions in this community center. It used to be a school in Charlottesville called the Jefferson Center. And uh, we're in the middle of writing a big grant because we want Somebody, we want there to be some place in town where people who are doing cool stuff can borrow laptops and make it happen. So yeah, when people say, oh, libraries, they ought to be more like Apple stores. Well, yes and no, but let's start with the fact that um, Apple is sitting on a mountain of cash and libraries aren't. Um, so, next step, step three, publicize. Here's the poster that they put up in, in the, my branches at Jefferson Medicine Regional Library. Get your sign-up sheets ready and send permission slips home. The first session, you don't want to talk too much. When I say brief intro, I mean don't be like me. Don't talk their hind legs off, as my Irish parents would say. Make it three minutes. Just say, Mozilla cares about people learning how to make websites their own and have more power online. They've provided these cool tools, and we're going to explore. And really, you don't need to, much more of an intro than that. These laptops that I borrowed from my school were all configured to automatically connect to the public Wi-Fi in the library branches. It was fabulous. And they were actually already set up with a persona. But I wasn't worried about these kids going someplace else online and you know trying to do something. They were just they were there for the fun and there, we had no problems at all. Then, um, so after your brief intro, hand out some little half sheets of paper with the important URLs. Run them through a URL shortener. Nobody likes to type 50 characters of a URL. And you know the most popular ones, Bitly or the Google URL shortener. And um, the URLs are for the corkboard that I'm going to show you in a minute, which has brief information. It's a website. 
that looks like a court board, and it holds the two templates that the teams are going to remix. And then there's also the URL for the website that I made with more information, more options, more templates for people who want to do more of this at home. And then also a Padlet, because as they finish things, if you give them the URL to a public Padlet, they can double click anywhere on that Padlet wall and put in the, the URL of their finished projects. And then people in the room can say, oh, that's so cool. How did you do that? I want to see how you did that. So Padlet.com is a fun um, sort of a visual back channel where you double click and add sticky notes. So here's the cork board. I remixed this uh, from someone else's template. And I changed these sticky notes, these pinned sticky notes, to just add some information that I thought the teens might need. This is in your resources slide at the very end so that you can get a free Mozilla WebMaker account, click Remix, and then you can easily change the name of your library, the name of this library to your library, change my email to your email, and then totally leave everything else the same if you want. So here are the two symbol templates, and I'm going to go ahead and click on them one at a time to show you what they look like when they're live. So the easiest one is this Keep Calm poster, and this is the one that my one of the rising sixth graders worked really long and hard and was really proud when she totally remixed this Keep Calm, Calm book review poster. So let me see if my link is working. Whoops. Okay, so my link is not working here, I'm sorry, but um, it is in your resources. It is in, in, on that resources slide. Maybe when I'm in present review, it doesn't work. So the, the librarians who worked with me, the librarians from the public library who worked with me on these events, they also contributed some resources, and Angela Critics at the downtown library brought some quotes if kids wanted to use quotes about books, she brought in she brought in some books to, to give them ideas. But we told them that the starting point for these remix activities could be book reviews, but they didn't have to be. So that they could remix them into anything they wanted, but if they wanted to make it a book review, we would love that. So we did have some, some resources. So here, the Keep Calm poster was nice and easy. You could change the color. You could change the font. You could change the image. The flipping postcard is more complicated. And Kim Wilkins um, coded this. I remixed it. I changed it into a book review flipping postcard. And it does flip. And it's got sound. So there's a lot more possibilities here for customizing and tinkering. Teens can change the image. They can change the rate of rotation. They can change the angle of rotation, the speed of rotation. Um, there's the, the sound embedded. The sound file embedded is of someone cheering and saying, woohoo, that um, Kim got from a tennis match, I think. And, but I had one teen who erased that and replaced it with a file from his favorite song, and, it, and it's a nice touch. So there are a lot of different things they can do with that one. Here's the, the Padlet. It's really helpful. Step five, it's really helpful if you've got a projector and you can hook up one of your library laptops to project the Padlet to show them, to show the whole group, and then also for kids to look at later to just show the projects. And Padlet as I said, is a wonderful, easy to use website. It's free, it's fun. The background, the wallpaper that I chose for this Padlet is a like curling surf ocean look. And then kids in my session would double click anywhere and they would add words and then they would insert the, um, the image from their, from their finished project and they figured that out really, really quickly. So they were able to post all these, and then if you project it on the wall, they can look up and say, hey, who's Wren? And then someone across the room will say, over here, and they'll say, hey, I want to I see how you did that. 
and they'll walk over and you know sit sit next to someone they want to learn from. So that's a, a wonderful extra, I think. And um, when you make a Padlet, you you get a resulting URL, and it's a lot of fun to just put that URL into your website so that kids later go home, they can show their parents, look at what the whole group made, or they, kids can take time later to look at individual projects that maybe they didn't get a chance to see in the moment. So as I said, my sessions were two-part. You could definitely do one-part sessions. And you kind of have to think on your feet. This group at um, the Central Library was very happy with both sessions. They, they worked on one template, and then they worked on another. And some of them tried something a little harder, I think, which is the browser takeover. And they shared, and they were great. The, um, and you can see this girl right in front has got the flipping postcard on the right-hand side of her screen. And then she's got the code on the left. And I think she was a rising sixth grader. And she um, were stuck with that until she made that postcard the way she wanted. The group at Crozet at the other branch, some of them completed both templates and the browser takeover or else they weren't interested in doing all of those. So you always kind of have to have a plan B in the back of your mind, just like when I was in the public library and the llama was 30 minutes late. You've got a plan B for how to keep 200 kids happy. I've blocked out that memory. Um, but in my case, for this group, my plan B was on my website. I had two of the simplest online ebook makers. And so if they, were, if they had looked at all these templates and they wanted to try something different, they were welcome to go to my website and try one of those very simple um, ebook making activities. So what does the code side look like? This is a screenshot of the Keep Calm poster. In, uh, instead of having the, that blue poster on the right, I just put the question, what does the code side look like? And the directions are written in within the code. So you see the, the different tags and the divisions and things. And then if, if we scroll down on this page, you would see the style sheet with more code to, to um, set the look and feel of this template. But just looking at this, even without knowing any code at all, you can see that here's a link, HTTP, and you can see that it ends with PNG. So if you remember that there are other file formats for images besides JPEG, you might recognize that PNG as being a file format for that. Or if you know a little bit of code, you can see it's got the IMG tag right there. Or you can go ahead and read the manual which is not always my first step. So task one, change the image on your poster. To change it, find the URL of a Creative Commons image of the book you want and insert it between the quotation marks. So this is what we did. And actually, I am going to go back and rewrite those directions because I see postimage.org is how I took some image off the desktop of my computer and turned it into a URL ready to use online. And that was on the corkboard. One of my tips was use post image. And it's in the resource resources list at the very end of this presentation. So task one, change the image. Task two, change the heading text. These Mozilla Thimble directions all are always trying to teach you a little bit about code while you're tinkering with the code. So here's the heading text. And it, so it explains that H1 is a heading tag. And so that's where you would replace these words. Instead of this really small, really good book, you could change it to this really small, really good pastry if you wanted to. If, if, you, if your teens wanted to change it, they can make it anything they like. So um, at the bottom, whoops, I'm sorry. At the bottom, I did mention on the 
cork board that you need to make sure you've got permission to use images and you need to make sure that you credit your images. So here's the template and the, all the different parts of that can be customized. This is the, this is the template that I remixed and I actually did this in a wonderful National Writing Project Educator Innovator Retreat. I remixed this template and I remixed the flipping postcard dragon template with the idea that I would be using these in libraries. And when I tested them on my fifth graders and found them a little too complicated, that was another reason that I, that I really wanted to reach out and work with teens this summer. So here's some of the things that kids made. There's the keep calm poster turned into a keep this puppy poster. And on the right, there's the keep calm poster turned into a really short, really nice book review. Um, if I had, if I were working in the public library at this point, I would plan ahead for color printing screenshots of some of these finished book review posters, blowing them up, celebrate, you know, put, posting them around the library, maybe even around town, and celebrating some of the nice products that come out of these teen events. This is the purple keep calm and eat ice cream poster that a rising sixth grader worked very, very hard to do. And she asked for help from several of the older teens and they were really great. It was, it was fun to see them working together. Okay, now we're going to talk about the browser takeovers. Um, a JavaScript takeover is a piece of code where if you drag this, in this case, if you drag, if we were on this website, if you dragged this image that says, bonjour, take me to your browser, if you dragged that up to your toolbar, to Mark's toolbar, you would have installed the original French toast takeover. I actually think I remember a bacon takeover from several years ago, but um, this is the starting point. This is the template for our for our browser takeovers. It's Hey French Toast. So you drag this up to your toolbar, your bookmarks toolbar, and then, then you go to any website you want. And I always go to the dog's article on Wikipedia because we can't have a dog at our house right now. And it, anyway, it's fun to see when you use these browser takeovers, they take over all the images on the whole web page, on the whole, yeah, the whole web page, and change it into what your code has told it to do. So the Hey French Toast takeover turns all the dog images on the Wikipedia dog article into five different lovely mouth-watering images of French toast. So this was without permanently changing the Wikipedia article. So this was the starting point. And so here's what a 14-year-old did. He, he changed it into a Game of Thrones takeover. So this is what you, if you went to his URL, and it's there in, in, on the website in the resources, if you drag this whole thing, I enlarged it for our slide, but if you drag that to your bookmarks toolbar and then go to any website, it will change all the images on that website to the images that he chose from Game of Thrones. And when we projected that in the room for everyone to see, Crozet Library, the other teens were thrilled. It's like, okay, I, I'm coming to sit next to you, Jacob. I want to know how that works. I want to know how you did that. And it requires a little work because you have to choose images that are, um, like you have to choose a certain number that are horizontal, a certain number that are vertical. And I, I don't think it has to be perfectly the same size, but there's a little tinkering involved. And they are definitely able to do that. So here's a screenshot of after I triggered his or Jacob's browser takeover on the Wikipedia dog article. It inserted uh, this picture instead of 
a picture of a dog. And here is the Josh Ramsey JavaScript takeover. Up here where it says, hey Ramsey, she called it hey Ramsey. That's the part you dragged to the toolbar. And then it changed three lovely fluffy dogs into images of a Canadian actor and singer and guitarist from um, her favorite band. Now when she did this remix, when Jacob did his browser takeover remix, they it's the first time they've done this, so they didn't really tinker too much with the directions. I think that if I were doing follow-up sessions with teens, I would encourage them and work with them to rewrite the directions so that they could share this remix how-to with a slightly younger audience. I think, I think middle schoolers and even fifth graders would love to do this, but the directions would have to be rewritten in a little bit simpler form. And that's part of what I want to do for my fourth and fifth graders. I want to um, buddy up with Kim, get her to help me code some simpler templates, and then I will write kid-friendly language directions and we'll see how that works with fourth and fifth grade webmaker events. So here's the flipping postcard. Let's see if this is the live link. Am I lucky? I am. Okay, we went to it. There's the remix button. <laughs> I'm going to turn down the clapping a little bit. And as you can see, I rewrote, I um, remixed this and changed it to be a very short, simple book review. I left the stamp in honor of Kim's Tech Girls, since she was the one that coded the original template. And I changed a lot of things with very little knowledge. It felt really good. It got me very interested in learning more about coding. So I changed the rotational speed. I changed the font. I changed the words. I changed the image on the front and the colors um, on the front, plus this red. I don't think Kim's original had this red background. So let me see. How do I escape from here? Might need to go back. Here we go. I might need to go back to my presentation. There we go. And um, that dragon image, it's a beautiful sculpture somewhere in Germany. I got it off of uh, Wikipedia, com Wikimedia Commons. Now, Nathan, at one of our libraries, remade that flipping book review postcard into a real flipping postcard. So if you go to the website and click on his example, his link, it flips and it says something like, I am having a fabulous time surfing and wish you were here. And he also added some music to it. You'll see the wording down here. This is a screenshot from the website, but I ask them, if you remix this, to make it about a real or imaginary summer trip, send it to me and I'll post it on the website. They're very hesitant to do that. And, um, and I think you would have to, like in my case, I'm just a, a visiting friendly stranger, but I think if you got to know them better, if they were the, your teen advisory committee or something like that, they would probably be more um, willing to commit to that. Same thing with my Google form. I removed it because they were not willing to participate in any kind of survey. This is an example of the extra resources I've given for people who want to go beyond. This is a poem that I remixed. My poem is Wild China and I remixed it from a poem that Kevin Hodgson made. He's a National Writing Project leader and language arts teacher in Massachusetts. He also just wrote a really good article on advocacy for the latest issue of Knowledge Quest. And um, Dr. Beth Fries and I co-edited that issue. It just came out last week. We were very lucky to get Kevin Hodgson to write for us and some other really cool people. OK, further possibilities. Your teens are going to come up with ideas, and you are going to come up with ideas. But the thing that really strikes me is that 
these activities could go somewhere in terms of connecting teams with experts in the field, interested volunteers, community members. Um, you know, you might have a team that says, "Hey, I want to do some art for somebody's website." Can you know how how will I contribute? How will I connect? You might have someone who says, "I really wish there was a template for blah blah blah," and then you could reach out to people in the community, experts, academics, business people. The the world is full of people who know how to do cool stuff with code, and they like to connect with young people. Further possibilities, blended literacies. That term is so vague that it's wide open. I love it. Um, a fourth grader made this concrete poem for me. I still haven't figured out what I want to do with it. I haven't figured out if I want to put in some conductive ink or and then click, clip a makey-makey to it and then make a thimble template that does something animated with that snail? I don't know, but once you start to think about where writing meets coding, you will see ideas everywhere. So here is my resource page and um, Kim Wilkins' information. I've got the editable permission slip that you are welcome to use that we dreamed up for our sessions. There's the, um, there's the link for Padlet. There's my JMRL Webmaker site. You are welcome to copy and use anything off there. Change it, it reuse it. It's very helpful to have a website to extend these kinds of events. And then here are, here's the cork board that holds those two thimble templates. And also post image, and then more information about Mozilla's web literacies and tools. So I'm wondering if anyone has any questions. And Krista, um, do I can I just leave this slide up and see what you've got for questions? Um, yeah, I'd say go ahead. Yeah, leave that up for people to look at. Um, just so everyone know, and we did have a question about this. Um, any of the websites and things that um, Melissa was mentioning throughout the show, I've been capturing to our um, Library Commission Delicious account. So all of the links will be available and these ones that are here at the end as well, so you'll have them as a quick link. Um, and the slides as well will be available. I think you were going to post them, Melissa, yes, send me a I've, link. I've, yeah. I've put them on SlideShare, and I'm okay. sorry I forgot to put that link. Yeah. But if you just Google M. Techman SlideShare, you'll find them. Okay, I will um, link to that as well when we put up the recording so you guys all have a quick link um, to her slides as well. Now the no. slides on SlideShare are, um, they were uploaded from PDFs, so they won't mm -hmm. have that live link, but the corkboard link that we're looking at on this resources slide holds the live links to the flipping postcard, postcard and the keep calm book review poster, and um, but remember, it's it's really easy to get your own free Mozilla Webmaker account and tinker with this stuff, and then just start asking people, hey, would you like to help me make a new template for that I could <laughs> use with my teams? And mm -hmm. also, when you go to the Webmaker Tools site, which is the last link on this slide, um, you can poke around on that page and go to the gallery and look at all the different templates. I have only used two, but there are dozens of really cool templates on on that website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so we did have a few questions that came in um, at the beginning. So anybody just have any questions, you can type them into the question section of your GoToWebinar interface and I'll grab and I'll uh, grab them from there, or if you have a microphone, let us know. I have a microphone, unmute me, and I can do that. Um, someone just has kind of a comment that um, the thimble, um, so this is kind of like free Dreamweaver, the, the Dreamweaver software. Yes, and I remember, I remember wrestling with Dreamweaver 10 years ago and seeing some intriguing possibilities, but I was 
I was really, I was, but I was wrestling with, I was new to my job, and it was, mm -hmm. and I didn't really have time to get good at it. Um, yeah, and you will have some teens who will say, oh my gosh, this is too easy, because they've taken a couple of computer science classes, and they weren't entirely sure what they were getting into with these events, mm -hmm. uh, and then I would, I would, like, celebrate them and say, okay, I don't want to just totally use you to be coaching other people in this group, but would you open up a blank thimble template and maybe play around with making, like just dreaming up a, t a thimble uh, website from scratch for us that we could remix maybe next time? And so yeah, there's a lot in common with, with Dreamweaver and some other visual coding approaches. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, let's see, where's other questions? Lots more questions are coming in now. Um, do these tools work in other browsers besides the Mozilla Firefox browser? Oh, I should know that. And yeah, I just, I'm trying to remember from when we'd had them on. If I, I'm just honestly, I'm honestly not sure. But I, I tend to go back and forth between Firefox and Chrome, and I mm -hmm. don't. Re and because I'm, I'm an Apple person. Um, and I just don't, and I use and I use MacBook Pros or MacBook Airs for these events this summer. So I don't know about mm. other browsers. I'm so sorry, but I don't remember thinking, "Oh uh, my God, Chrome is not nice today." I just don't remember that happening. But I was probably in Firefox the whole time. Yeah, because that's just what you're used to. Yeah, uh, someone from our staff who's watching was with us when we did the previous show. Says that they recall that the answer was yes, it can work in other words. And other browsers, but it works best, quote unquote, in Firefox, of course, because it is Mozilla creating them. So you should be able to yeah. use other ones, but you might um, have some issues or things might not work as pretty as you might um, want them to. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, qu another question: Do they give you server room to post your site, meaning Mozilla, like when people use it to create these websites? Yes. Where does endless mm -hmm. room? They love these. They love these templates and every remixed iteration thereof. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a nice thing. Uh, okay, where did you mention that you go to to get the Mozilla swag for the events? Um, you know, I'm trying to remember. I think if you Google the word Mozillarian, mm -hmm. yes, I feel like that. That um, active group where where Mozilla connects with libraries, I think, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that's where Kim got hers. I I just kept forgetting to contact them to order the stuff for my events. I'm going to try and do it for the fall and winter. But I think if you just contact almost anyone in the web make, or if you Google like Maker Party, they were doing a lot of events this summer. I mean, my events were officially yeah. made. So if you Google Maker Party and, and contact almost anyone, they'll pass it along until you get to the right person. Yeah, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna add the link to Mo Mozillarian. This is one that was yeah. This is actually we had um, the guy o okay okay who was one a guy from Sweden who created this organization this group um, was actually yeah. on our show previously. Um, I will add a link to that too. Yeah, there's a link for teaching resources, um, maker parties, um, different maker resources. Parties. Yeah, teaching, teaching resources is what they call their kits, and so mm -hmm. the, you can look at the gallery to see templates, or you can find templates inside well thought out teaching kits. Either way is fine. But yeah, I, I would say the mm -hmm. maker party side handles the the swag. As they yeah. Say. Okay. Um, so it says, great presentation. What is the smallest group you would run this program with? I think you'd mentioned um, largest, but. You know, I, I just, if you're, if you're a full-time children's or teen librarian and, and if you can fit it into your schedule to, to hold it for even three or four kids or three or four teens, I think that's fun too, and you can build from there. I think if you wanted to run a very small session for your teen advisory board, mm. and then you know see what they thought, I think that would be fun. They can I'm be your guinea of, pigs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm the kind of person that. Um, I mean, we had full sessions; we had 15 seats. But mm. if, if for some reason only two or three people 
had shown up, I would have been thrilled and you know, I would have worked with them with the idea that word of mouth kind of spreads. You can really start anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then the next time they'll, they'll tell their friends and more of them will come along. Yes, I never have any problem with groups that are too small. Um, I, uh, I just, you just are limited. It's the number of seats equals the number of laptops. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Um, okay, and then here's a uh, technical, technical question maybe. Um, if a teen makes a mistake on their thimble and accidentally deletes too much, et cetera, or does something a little more than they wanted to, is there a way to restore it for them or like to back up to previous versions or can they save their project as they go along? How does that? Yes, if you have, um, everyone has to have a, a Mozilla Webmaker account before they start these remixing activities. And so once you're logged in, I'm trying to remember, there's like something that has to be in place in order for you to save, but you, but you click save and then it gives you several URLs. One is the URL that you can use to edit it. And then one is the kind of published URL that other people can use to remix it. You're never mm -hmm. actually changing the template um, that you started with. But I think in, I'm not really doing a good job of answering this question. I'm just thinking of times when I made mistakes, and I and I would I would use you know undo undo to try and get back. But I think there I feel like there was one time when I didn't save. I didn't know exactly what I needed to do to save it, and I, and I, and I lost, I lost something. And it, it can't be that hard, or I would have remembered it and added it into the directions for these slides. <laughs> right. So, so something that'll kind of just, like, it'll happen as they're using it, and then yeah, it'll and be it's, fine. It's yeah. Satisfactory, but it, it's yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay, that was the last question we had in. Anybody have any other last-minute questions you want to ask of Melissa? Type them into the question section. Um, you do have her contact information there as well. I'm sure she'd be willing to chat with you separately afterwards. Absolutely. And, uh, contact me any way you like, Twitter or email. And um, thank you so much for having me. This was I really learned a lot in doing this. I think that the Nebraska Library Commission has some wonderful resources for librarians across America. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. I'm glad to have you on. I'm glad you, you contacted me and just, you know, and that's you said on Twitter, just a quick little uh, comment on Twitter and uh, boom, we've got all this great resources and of what you guys are doing there. I thought this stuff that, well, like I said, when we had the people from the Mozillarians on about the Mozilla Webmaker tools and everything, I just thought it was very cool. We used it for other reasons, other programmings here too, um, and I'm glad that we got uh, someone actually doing it out there. I mean, we had the people who were creating it and doing it with Mozilla, the foundation, and the um, people in Sweden. But um, I'm a, glad that we got to have someone on real world use of it <laughs> to share it with everyone. We just got a few th comments Thank coming you. through. Thank yeah, you, I great think, webinar. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you guys for coming. I'm the way it all came about. I was I did one session and I was I was talking about it on the fly on Twitter and all of a sudden somebody said I'm in this Nebraska webinar and they just showed your teens Game of Thrones takeover on the screen and I was floored it's like oh I think it was Alita Hansen I said wait a minute aren't you in Massachusetts what are you doing in Nebraska? And she said, no. No, silly. It's this great weekly webinar, and um, so it was like I had ha I had I had hashtagged whatever I was saying on Twitter with just the word webmaker, and then and then do you say OK? Mm -hmm. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah that's how he pronounces it. Yeah, it's spelled A K E, but it's pronounced OK. Yeah, Swedish. Okay. He and I had been talking a little bit on Twitter the previous week, so he had just like flung it up there um, in his presentation, and so it was fascinating to me. That was when I first learned about these fun webinars that you guys do, and then I was mm -hmm. able to say to Jacob, hey, Jacob, a Swedish guy posted <laughs> on the Nebraska webinar. He blinked at me. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you, and, and yeah. you guys feel free to 
contact me. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Then um, I think that will wrap it up. Looks like no last minute questions had come in while we were chatting. Um, so thank you very much, Melissa. I'm gonna and thank you everyone for attending. I'm gonna pull back presenter control to my screen now. There we go. Yes. So that will, as I said, wrap it up for this week's edition of Encompass Live. The show has been recorded, or is being recorded as we speak, and will be available later. Um, I'll let everyone know when the recording is ready, and we will have a link. Um, here is where um, Melissa's slides are on her SlideShare account here. I've linked to this, and we'll, we'll have that, and we have our recordings put up as well. And all of the links that were uh, mentioned throughout the show, I grabbed many of, as many of them as I could, and I'll see if there's any other ones I didn't catch as I was going through um, when I look at your slides. They'll all be available here on our Library Commission Delicious account. I'll have a direct link to this as well. I tagged them all with Encompass Live and Teen Tech. So that wraps up for this week's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is a very Nebraska-centric one broadband and mobile broadband coverage in Nebraska. Um, Colin Robbins who's from the Nebraska Public Service Commission. I believe he's in office just above us here. He's going to be on the show to talk about um, work that they've been doing at the Public Service Commission to um, just figure out where broadband is throughout the state and what needs to be done to increase it. So um, if you're interested in that, want to see what's going on with broadband here in the state of Nebraska, sign up for that and for any of our other shows that we have coming up in the future. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a Facebook user, please do go over there and like us on Facebook. You get notifications of when new shows are starting, are coming on, when recordings are available. I give a reminder every week, here's the one that just went out earlier this morning of what today's show is. So if you are big on Facebook, definitely do go ahead and like us there. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much, everyone, and we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.